back into action for the ever popular Yasmin Lucindo. This time she gets a UFC veteran in Pollyanna Viana. Not a broken walker, but a Pollyanna Viana, man. Somebody who's got some pretty wicked striking and some solid grappling to boot. But with that being said, man, we do have to talk about some of these younger fighters who are really splashing on the scene. Yasmin Lucindo. Um, we have the... Uh, 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 I'm blanking on her name too, man. Brazilian chick, submission artist. She's, you know who I'm talking about? It's like Karine, Karine, uh, Karine Silva. Karine there we Silva? go. Karine Silva. Some of these younger fighters who are just splashing on the scene. They're killing it, right? Yasmin Lucindo, given that she just pretty much beat up Brogan Walker over the course of three rounds, who was a tough finalist, all that stuff. What do we think her, her chances of victory are against an established veteran like Pollyanna Viana? Well, this is the test, isn't it, Derek? This yeah. is the real litmus test of finally getting into somebody who, admittedly, if you're a casual fan, you probably don't know who Pollyanna Viana is unless you follow her on Instagram or something like that. There's no, there's nothing in the, the casual media mind that's really claiming Pollyanna Viana right here. So I think a lot of people are looking for Lucindo to really put the pressure on, really throw those hands, really be the bully that we've seen her be, walk you down, kick you in the leg, punch you in the head, punch you in the gut, kick you in the gut, all these things that we've seen her do. But Derek, now, I mean, if, if you're looking for numbers on how effective I think that or how easy this win is going to be for Lucindo, let's say she gets the win. I don't think it's going to be easy at all. I'm, I was genuinely, I'll let, the, I'll let the, the, the mask off or whatever you want to call it. I've been back and forth on this pick so many times. When I sent it to Derek on Discord, this was one of those ones where I thought like, man, we got a sleeper right here in Pollyanna Viana because she can do so much damage and nobody is giving her any credit. I mean, the underdog in this fight, it's a little closer than I thought it was going to be. I won't lie. Plus 160 is not bad. So if you're on the Viana camp, hammer that. But she presents so many options and so many different tactics in which to fight but doesn't have that boisterous attitude like lucindo does so a, a lot less eyes on makes for a dangerous opponent do you feel what i'm saying there no everything that you're saying rings true because to the average person you're going to look at this fight and you're going to say oh lucindo minus 190 okay i get it viana what have i seen her done that's impressive well she's done a lot that's impressive you just got to pay attention to be able to recognize that and i think that she showed she showed a lot, man. She showed a lot, especially like in her last one against Jin Yu Frey, right? Jin Yu Frey, or Jin Yu Fry, excuse me. She's a very talented fighter, admittedly small for her weight class. She was a former Adam weight fighter, so it's not really the same thing. But to be able to get her out of there at 115 pounds with like a TKO like that it was very impressive. Now, if you look at the last three finishes before that, Veronica Hardy, which like you cannot downplay that loss. It is aged very, or that win. It's aged very well, or that loss. Yeah, it was a loss. Um, Veronica Hardy has kind of gotten back into, you know, good standing. Mm -hmm. Emily, Whit Emily Whitmire, which is not the greatest win, and then Mallory Martin. So two people who are like admittedly not really in the UFC anymore, but all first round, right? So like you got the loss against Hardy, you get two wins against some other fighters, all finishes. That's the point. When she's winning, she's finishing fights. When she's tall and she's able to strike and not the threat of someone trying to take her down like Tabitha Ricci did, she's got some very impressive Muay Thai stand-up right there, man. So that's... For me, that's what this matchup is about. It's about the technical prowess of the tall fighter who is taller and longer in Viana who's going to throw straight shots versus Lucindo where lots of wild stuff is going to get thrown. But if she clips you, that's when we're going to really have problems on our hands. So what do you take? 10 out of 10 times, do you take the technical striker over the power person? Or do you say, oh, no, power definitely wins four out of 10 times? Like, what is your thought? On that, on that uh, scale, Derek, I'd say technique wins seven out of ten times. Mm -hmm. Puncher always has a chance. The power always has a chance to land. But you put somebody in the ring ten times, usually it's going to be that technique that wins it. What do you think? I, I, I mean, it's crazy because in MMA, anything can happen. So it's like it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't particularly apply to a T. But, yeah, I like the technical striker. Like if I'm saying probability-wise, give me the technical striker who's going to throw the clean, straight shots, get out of distance, mix in a takedown versus – the one who is I'm gonna walk forward. I like I like Lucindo's her her hand to gauge distance. It's always out there, always out there. She switched stances and that stuff. But Viana with that tall stance right there, and she's a taller fighter, it's gonna be hard for Lucindo to pop that jab as much, in my opinion. So I just see an upset play here. I see Pollyanna Viana winning a decision victory um, because I don't think she's going to take her down and submit her. I think Lucindo is a little too well established for that personally. I think she wins a decision victory right here. A lot of people are like, oh my God, Pollyanna Viana, she stopped the hype train. She's so good. Da, 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 da. And then we're sitting here because we watch fights and we look at this and we said we knew that there was a high probability of this happening. However, we're not letting the narrative and the, uh, you know, the storyline sway our judgment. 
even though we, as we let the cat out of the bag earlier, we're not particularly on the same side of the fence for the pick. Do you understand the logic? Oh, 100% Derek. And all, the only reason we're not on the same side of the fence is just because we had to take the picks. Cause I'm literally <laughs> yeah. uh, one cheek over on that bench, brother. I am yeah. right there. <laughs> this is such a close fight folks. If you are, if you're as hesitant as I am on this one, I would do this one as a stay away, mm -hmm. but this is such a, like the dangerous thing about Pollyanna Viana and Derek listed to her, her acumen just a little bit ago, all those fighters that we don't know anything about anymore that, that kind of fell off was because they ran through Pollyanna <laughs> Viana and she finished him in round one. So she is that test. She is that litmus marker going forward. And if it happens to Lucindo, that mental game right there, that, mm -hmm. that thought of, am I as good as the Tabitha Ricci's? Am I as good as all these fighters that she has lost to? The JJ Aldridge, the Hannah Cyphers. Yeah, those are older names. But they were still at one point in the top of the division. Yeah. Can Lucinda match that? It, it's a very scary thought. And to that point, Derek, I think the only way or what the the easiest route to victory for Lucindo and I'm going to hammer it man plus 380 TKO I think that's the only way you got to dip on the inside be a little mini Mike Tyson catch her on the chin and do not follow her to the ground that's right that's right fair enough right there and just know listen man these hot studs they can get it done they totally can or we can get screwed the way we did when Yasmin Hadegi ran into Denise Gomes right and like if you don't know those names folks go check the tapes man you, you, you know what time it is all right